Do you find yourself starting projects but rarely finishing them? Today, I'm going to be sharing five tips to help you remain focused on your goals from the lens of a multi-passionate creative. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You're good at a lot of things. You're not the best at any one thing, but you're pretty decent at a lot of them. They can be creative, they can be analytical, they can even be personal. You're one of those people that picks up hobbies and you stick with it to get just good enough to where you're a little bit better than the average person. And then you experience shiny object syndrome and go and find something else to occupy your time. This happens repeatedly until you collect a bunch of hobbies or skills. But now you're in a place where you really wanna hone in on something. You really wanna get great at one thing, but your old habits are dying hard. You're having a hard time really committing to this one thing because once you reach a certain point or you reach a certain level, you find yourself getting distracted. If this sounds familiar at all, you are not alone and I have been there. In fact, I'm still working my way through it. Also, hi, my name is Larry G. I am a multi-passionate creative, but here on this YouTube channel, I aim to help people like you focus on developing skills in photo, video, and storytelling. So let's get started with tip number one, which is setting the goal, or what I like to call making a decision with boundaries. Now, if you're anything like me, I'm sure you've tried to set goals before. You may have even attended a few goal setting sessions with other people, but it's not really sticking. I believe that this is due to the connotation of the word goals. Sometimes goals are things that can sometimes feel unattainable. They feel far out. They don't always feel so close to us, which is why I like to shift the terminology to making a decision. You make decisions every single day. And when you make a decision, usually you have to stick with whatever choice was made. Now, as someone who has multiple passions and multiple interests, I understand that making a decision can be easier said than done, but it doesn't have to be scary. I think if you're in this spot where you're starting to want to get great at something, you've already partly made a decision or set some sort of internal goal to where you wanna go. The next step is to actually solidify that. And instead of just thinking about it, saying, no, I am deciding that I'm gonna to commit to this thing for a set period of time. The reason that we're adding a time to this decision and to this goal is because that puts a boundary on us and actually sets us up for more success. The other thing I wanna be really clear about is when you make a decision, it has to be a decision that is based on actionable steps. So in the world of YouTube, a lot of people set decisions and goals based on subscriber counts or comments or engagement rate. And those things are completely out of your control. Yes, you could do things to influence them, but realistically, you cannot control how many subscribers you get. Instead, what you wanna set your decision on is, I will post a YouTube video every week for the next however long you wanna be committed to this thing. Another example would be, I want to learn to play Hotel California on the guitar in six months. Setting time-bound goals and making time-bound decisions will help you keep track of where specifically you want to go. The next tip is to literally write it down. I don't know the exact science, but there have been studies done that there is a connection between writing something down and what it does to your brain. The way that I like to make this connection is that thoughts are fleeting. We think about things all the time. We have millions or billions of thoughts that pass through our brain and mind every single day. Simply making a decision could easily be forgotten. I forget decisions that I've made all the time, but something changes when you write it down. It becomes real, it becomes permanent, and it's not as easily forgotten. When you write something down, you're now taking it out of a metaphysical world and putting it into a physical world. You're giving it life and presence and actual space in this physical world. And that is something that makes it 
just a little bit more real. The next tip is to tell someone, but not just any someone. Tell someone who will help hold you accountable. For this, I do not recommend telling any of your close friends, your family members, siblings, parents, even your spouse or significant other. These are all people who will make excuses for you based on what they know is going on in your life. And while I'm not against adjusting things for life, I am against people making excuses for you when you could have actually done the thing. This is why I actually recommend getting an accountability buddy who is not one of the aforementioned groups. After you've made that decision, you've written it down, you need to find someone to tell. Someone who's gonna hold you accountable. Someone who's not gonna take any of your BS or any of your excuses. Someone who'll give you that extra kick, that extra push, especially when you need it. Now, if you don't have someone for you like that in your life, please leave a comment on this video. I would love for this comment section to become a resource for us to find our own accountability buddies and make sure that we're pushing each other towards these goals. Another great way to find an accountability buddy is to join Facebook groups. Yes, Facebook groups. The other reason that we need to tell someone else about this decision and this goal is because it's so easy to make things up for ourselves. It's so easy to talk yourself in or out of doing something. It's easy to just say, I'll do that tomorrow or the next day or push it off. But it's so much harder when you tell someone and you know that that person is counting on you or depending on you or expecting a result out of you. While it might be a little bit easier to let ourselves down, it's so much harder to let other people down. And that's the point. Tip number four is a little less practical and it's one that I'm really proud of and working on and it's incorporating your distractions into your decisions and goals. For me, this tip has helped tremendously in my own personal YouTube journey. And a clear example of this is a video I made a couple weeks ago about becoming a creator. And if you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the cards here. Truthfully, this was an idea I had for a video about becoming a creator in a niche or something that you're really passionate about. This stemmed from right before the Drake versus Kendrick beef started really heating up. The idea came from my distraction of wanting to create separate pieces of content. Now, I love music. I've loved music for an extremely long time. I have several tattoos based on music and it's something that interests me. And so when things in the industry started heating up, I wanted to talk about them and share about them. But I also made a commitment to this YouTube channel and making videos for a specific audience. So instead of forcing myself to make a video that honestly was not something I was completely interested in that week, I decided to take my distraction idea and morph it to fit the mold of this YouTube channel and of my decision, my goal, and my commitment. I took my distraction and I used it as fuel for the next project that I was putting out for this YouTube channel. And even though that video may seem a little out of place, it worked. I still was able to hit my goal. I made a video that week, I edited a video that week, and I hit publish that week. That idea was 100% a distraction. On its own, it did not fit the mold of this YouTube channel. And if I had put that video that I wanted to make here, it would have been completely out of place. It would have fallen flat completely. It would have not fit the mold. But by taking just a little bit of time to see how I could fit this idea into this channel, I was able to make it work. The final tip I have to really help you focus on your goals and stay committed is to celebrate all of the milestones, even the tiny ones. Whenever you hit certain milestones towards reaching your goal, you need to celebrate. For example, my goal is to publish a video every week for the next year. When I hit five videos, I celebrated. When I hit 10 videos, I celebrated. Last week, I hit 20 and I celebrated. 
Celebrating doesn't have to be extravagant. It can be telling your accountability buddy or making a post on social media or sharing it with the people that are close to you. The people that are close to you and the people that you share these celebrations with want you to succeed. They want you to be good at your thing. They want you to keep going. And so whenever you share these tiny milestones with them, it encourages you and it gives you a boost and it makes you feel good. Hitting those milestones is a sign of showing up. And that's not something that you should take for granted. So many people have ideas and dreams and goals and they don't show up for themselves. But whenever you're hitting these milestones, it's a testament and it's proof that you're showing up, you're putting in the work and you're making progress. In our guitar example from earlier, the milestone that could be celebrated is you learned the first verse, you learned a special lick, you learned the solo until eventually you learn the entire song and you put it all together. Remember that effort, much like interest, compounds. The more you do something continuously, repetitively, the better that you'll get and the faster you'll get better at it. If this video was helpful to you in any kind of way, I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content around photo, video, or storytelling through the lens of a content creator, please subscribe as I make videos every single week to help people and content creators just like you. If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope this was helpful for you in some way. If you think it's helpful for someone else, consider passing it along. If not, no worries. Until next time, remember to do the work, believe in yourself, and keep creating. Peace.